for coming on. I'm excited <clears throat> to bring this next gentleman on to Title 24. Took it to the house this weekend uh, in, in, in St. Louis. Let's bring him on. Our All man, right. Levi Kitchen, Monster Energy Pro Circuit, Kawasaki rider. There he is. What's <laughs> up, guys? My man. How's it going, buddy? It's going pretty good. How about you? Oh, it's good. How was that bike ride? Uh, actually, I got the day off. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. So I've just been chilling on the couch, Dude. drinking coffee. <laughs> Dude, um, heck of a job, man. Like, is it is it feel like pretty surreal like what you did three in a row right like you did anaheim two you won that one and then the next race was seattle for you guys right no it went a2 and i won and then glendale yeah oh. uh, yeah i got I second it. at glendale and then won seattle dang it i messed up sorry about that dude crap no, it's all it's all run it all runs together rv He's your boy, Pacific Northwest. I know you've been a massive fan, and uh, you've been pulling for him. You put him on the hot seat a couple times here. Um, yep. I, I'm sure you got some stuff for him, so go for it. Yeah, man, i just uh, glad to have you on Title 24 for the first time. Um, man, I've obviously got to watch, you know, your your amateur, um, you know, career coming up, getting, you know, getting, securing that deal with Star Racing. Um, honestly, like, like RC had said, I was – I was a bit critical on you at star racing. Cause I know the potential that, that you have being that I've spent more time with you than anybody else on, on, on the gate, um, in this class. So I knew the potential, um, but it's, it's, it's really cool to be able to see and watch it really unfold right now. Things have got to be, you know, I, I, I know the difference, but I know pro circuit very, very well, Mitch, um, you know, kind of explain the differences between, you know, the star and, and why the success here, um, verse, verse over at star. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, just, just the side of, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit happier as far as, uh, even off the bike and, and also, you know, obviously on the bike, like it's a little bit of a different program and, um, Mitch, I don't know. It's just super relaxed over there. I mean, obviously I should have had Volan by my side. He unfortunately got hurt, but like, even now just being by myself over there and, um, everybody's just really relaxed, which is kind of the type of person I am. I'm pretty laid back. So mm -hmm. um, it's just been fun. And I think that's huge for me is just having fun. And, and uh, I always knew I kind of had this potential and mm -hmm. it's kind of weird right now. It feels like I knew this, like this point would kind of come as far as just believing in myself. And it, it kind of goes back to amateurs because I had a time where I got beat a lot and was never really winning anything. And then mm -hmm. once I won, it took me a couple times to win. And then I really started, uh, I mean, you guys know how it is. Once you win, it's just like you learn how to do it. And yeah. uh, I think that's, I'm finally learning how to do that part. And yeah, it just helps. It's like, I don't know. There's just so much confidence when I'm on the line now. And uh, I even feel like, like, yeah, I ripped all the starts this weekend, which was sweet, but yeah. two weekends uh, in a row, bro, actually. Yeah, I know. Dude. Yeah. I talk about it. I talk about it on the broadcast a lot because I don't even know if you remember telling this us this at media days in December, but you said how much at that time, how much you, uh, how much you liked the bike and the delivery of the power off of the start. And you said that, and then you you talked about how well the bike corners and um, how it goes where you want it to go in the corners. And it was those two things that really rung out and I had written it down. And and like everything that you're doing and the results that you're getting on the start is complimenting exactly, exactly what you said. And I wanted to ask you kind of like segue to this next thing with with all the success and how dominant you've been, especially the last two weeks, dude. How much easier is it during the week, like your training or like when you go to the practice track, is it just like 10 times more enjoyable? Like tell us and the people listening to the podcast or watching like what, what that what that process is like, like during the week, just in general, compared to like when you're not winning. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier, especially like <laughs> taking a day off like today. You know, if I'm getting beat, it's like. You know, 
I sure as hell am waking up at, at 7.30 and going on a bike ride because I feel like I got to try to, I don't know. But yeah, when you're, when you're doing well, it's like everything is uh, relaxed and, and at the practice track, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's really easy. You just go put in your laps and um, you just make sure, like my, my goal every week now is just making sure that I go into these weekends feeling really um, just fresh and, and excited to go racing. I think that's, that's huge. And, and I'm having a lot more fun at the races. Like, I think I'm just finally, you know, the nerves and all that kind of stuff, they're gone. And it's like, I can really focus. I think that's the biggest thing is, is my focus. Um, and that also comes from during the week. I'm really focused during the week, but also, um, you know, I still, still do the things I enjoy and get my mind off things like, Mm -hmm. whether that's fishing or going and playing some golf or whatever the case might be. Um, I think that's super important for me. I, 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 the difference that I see from, from, you know, years past, uh, and then even from the start of this series to, to cur currently right now, like you've established yourself to be in be as being the main guy. And I think you were one of the main guys coming in on paper but to your point, like, you know, like believing in and learning how to win and, and taking those steps, like you've really done really well in, with that in the last three weekends, like watching you ride. I always say he's like, he's a, he's a, he's a finely tuned Kevin Wyndham. He's like your riding style, a little bit more like Kevin, you know, you got that BMX kind of flow, um, like Kevin did a little bit. And it's, 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 uh, it's really, um, I don't know if pretty is the word to watch, but it's, it's fun to watch, you know, your, your riding style on the track, the smooth, you're a little bit taller, a little bit lankier than, than, than probably some of the guys out there, but it works into your favor. Like I can remember we were watching Seattle and you were standing up through majority of the turns until the exit of, of time to sit down. Um, and I think that, uh, that riding style, your precision, the way you ride the motorcycle is, is fun to watch. You know, I, I was more of the hammerhead RC. We know is more of the hammerhead too, for sure. So being able to yep. watch this, it's the new way. I always say it's the new age. Kevin Wyndham is what we're watching when we watch, when we watch you. Well, I mean, I always liked the K-Dub's riding style, so <laughs> I'll take that all day. Um, yeah. Then again, I wish I, I had a little bit of your guys's hammerhead type of ride in style too especially for like for like outdoors but i think if you can have a mixture of that yeah man you're a pretty pretty deadly combo that's gonna yeah, be what you're i'm looking forward to to see that too what what how how you approach outdoors not even necessarily how you approach but coming off of um and let's knock on wood hopefully this you know i've, I've texted you multiple times just keep the pressure on keep the pressure yeah. on keep, you got these guys on 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 the ropes here um, you know, so just keep doing what you're doing during the week and on the weekends, but then to make that transition in, into outdoors, you know, because I feel like in me watching and, and when, what I look at is that's kind of your next goal. I feel like you've, you haven't stamped it just yet and we won't, we won't count our uh, chickens before they're hatched. So let's get that, you know, let's get this done. But then that next transition is, is establishing yourself as, as a contender and as a race winner and also as a championship guy for, for outdoors. Yeah, for sure. I think the main goal is like now that I'm in the position I am in Supercross would just be, uh, you know, obviously championships are always the goal, but I just want to establish my name as one of the guys in the 250 class right now. And whether that brings a championship or – just brings you know plenty of battling up front or whatever it is in outdoors like i just want to make sure that that uh you know i'm not just like a, a super cross <laughs> super cross only guy obviously um yeah mm -hmm. i want to be be good at both of them and it's funny because i actually for a long i mean we grow up riding outdoors all of us we never ride super cross so i feel like i'm actually pretty good at outdoors and then now I feel like I'm, I'm taking to the supercross side pretty well too. So, um, I do believe I can be, I can be just as good outdoors as I am in supercross. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. And it's, I've rode a do little you? bit outdoors on this new bike or new for me, I should say. Yep. Yep. And, uh, it's pretty sweet. It, it handles really good. And Joe proved that I think the last couple of rounds of outdoors last year, I mean, he, he did well. Oh, yeah. so. Do you, do you prefer? Supercross, or like, what do you like? 
What do you like better, Supercross or Motocross? Man, it's so hard. Training wise, for sure, Supercross. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a lot easier. Yeah, a lot, but, lot shorter. <laughs> yeah, but racing wise, man, there is something about like if you're out front in an outdoor race and you're just seeing mm -hmm. a gap get bigger and you're like flowing with the track and jumping like bumps and stuff like that, there's like nothing better than that. Or even when you're just pissed off in the back getting blasted, but you're like going around people, that's pretty fun too. That's cool. Lie. Hey, um, we were talking about the tracks and you know what what makes good race tracks, and I per, like take the dirt out of the equation because St. Louis dirt is is epic. We all know that, yeah. and 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 you can attest to that uh, from this weekend. But did you think that this weekend how they put those little rollers on the insides? Um, after the one after the triple after the mechanics and then you could go inside or outside before the finish and then that back and forth section and then that right hander before the regular uh triple how you could go out and go three three did you did you feel like this racetrack this weekend was good for uh multiple lines compared to what you've raced uh all all year yeah i mean i think those little inside rollers for sure helped um it was tough because that dirt is so good. So yeah. luckily they put a roller like in some of those areas, because if they didn't, um, like for example, after mechanics area, that triple, uh, with the way that dirt is, if there was no roller on the inside, that inside would have been faster, no matter what, yeah. mm -hmm. what way you do it. Or, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think on a, like, it just, it has to, I think the dirt had a lot to do with that. Like it for sure made it race better. Now, if they put those rollers in at, let's say at Glendale or something like that, it's, you're not going to see guys probably use them much. Um, you're just going to be fighting for traction. So, yeah. Um, I did think the track raced well. It still somehow was, well, I never had to deal with it luckily, but it watching the racing, like that first moto, I was glad I could get around Juju quick because I knew what was going to happen. And sure enough, like for the first four laps, I was looking back and it was a freight train. Yep him so um i don't know if that's because yeah i i don't really know why why the tracks are are that way and that might have been because it was the first main two so the track there wasn't many passing options mm -hmm. um, but i don't know the tracks you know it's always hard i think everybody's getting so damn good that it's like they say the tracks are hard to pass, but also people are just all going pretty damn fast. So pretty fast. Yeah. And I, I felt like watching this, tr <clears throat> this track, the way that the, the layout was um, just like, we're watching you go over the triple right there. Like the track had a lot more speed everywhere. And part of that was because of the traction, how much traction, the lean angles you're able to do the lines you're able to take because of the traction, but also just the track in general, compared to what we've seen the past of this season is this track just was, was more racy. You could, you could push harder. The track didn't break down as much. They weren't, you know, uh, foot peg deep ruts everywhere. Like you could maneuver and, and change lines and, and, and go multiple places on the track. Also do it while carrying lots of speed, which I don't think yeah. we've seen a track like this, that, that we had, um, you know, I think the speed through the rhythm sections and, and across the start straights. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, like you said, the, the crazy part about this track is like, you could take any of those flat turns and open them up. And I watched Chase do it a couple times, like before the finish line, um, the traction that people, I mean, you could just cut it like however you want it to yeah. where, you know, other, other stadiums, like you wouldn't be able to do that kind of stuff uh, before the triple by mechanics area. Like I think a normal, racetrack you'd have to kind of use the berm maybe mm. or at least be easy on the throttle i mean you could pretty much hold it wide open on the flat stuff around that yeah so, um yeah i i think i'm a fan of you know a lot of people have been saying the track's been really soft and they have been but um you know luckily we're seeing a lot of people are still healthy and and i like when they get rutted just for my my sake like i thought seattle you know, I, I don't know. I just, I like when it's like that, you got to be really smart and, um, 
I'm not a huge fan. I'm telling of, like, you, it's that Kevin Windham style, bro. Just nice and easy, light and fast. <laughs> look like he's trying to go too fast, but he's hauling ass. Yeah, <laughs> like that's why at Glendale, I was so happy to get set. And I mean, I, I lucked into a second. Like Jordan, you know, when he landed on me and crashed, like that was, if I'm being honest, that was Jordan's night to win. He was faster than all of us by a good amount. But when the tracks were like that, I stress because like I don't like going wide open, and uh, yeah, I need something to kind of be technical, I guess you could say. Dude, speaking of that, um, the red flag or the red cross flag controversy, that second moto in the four fifties, and yeah. you're watching. I'm sure you're watching, and 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 it goes back to we talked about this RV on the show. Remember when? Uh, when you had that red cross situation in Glendale, going back to Glendale and uh, we haven't, yeah. even, I haven't talked to you about it, like uncertainty of like, and I know, listen, dude, I know you can't get yourself in hot water with the AMA. You can't have them pissed at you because you might need a favor from them someday. But <laughs> what, like in your, in your mind, cause you're racing RV and I are just sitting here on the couch, given our uh, expertise, but what, like put like what, explain to our our viewers and our listeners what was what would have been the difficult part of that or what could they have done better in your mind like was it hard to, to see to, where they were like yeah like tell us walk us through that like dude they should have done this can like walk us through what, what you think they should have done for the 450 class this week yeah 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 like um, the red the red cross yeah i really think that Honestly, on a checkered flag situation like that, I, it's so hard to, uh, I mean, they're going to go to the rule book, obviously, but I don't 100% agree with it. I mean, it's straight out of a, a 180 and you're pretty much, when you exit that 180, all the guys were going inside. I mean, you're up the face, like, yep. and it's almost such a dangerous instant or, you know, situation where like, I know a couple of the 450 guys said, like, by the time they saw it, if they would have backed out, well, you would have had multiple freaking Red Cross flags at that point because yeah, yeah totally going to be facing right into that finish line. So um, I think the only, you know, solution of that would have been, like, the guy would have had to have really got that flag out in front of where yes. you, know, you can tell on the left side of the screen right now, like, all the ruts where the people were actually jet somehow got over to the right more, but that flag needed to either be waved more or um, maybe, I don't know if there's a light set up for the, no, it looks like there's not. No, there there's needs not. to be maybe lights on the finish line. Uh, well, that's what I had said. They, I, I they, said. they could do lights and also they're making a priority of where, uh, a priority of waving the white flag. Well, yeah. as, as racers and as, uh, as everybody that's seen these red cross flags, like the priority is the rider on the ground. That's why the red cross flag only gets pulled out when they need it. That's what the yellow flag is for. The yellow flags for when the tough blocks get pulled out on the track, somebody washes yeah. out the turn, you know, like nobody's at a, 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 in any danger where, Clearly they thought Vince or whoever the moto concepts guy was on the ground in between the jump, that that was a dangerous situation. So make a priority of using that red cross flag for that danger situation, make it a priority, wave that thing. Don't wave the yeah. white flag and that the white flag's a priority, especially in that scenario there, because it's all a judgment scenario there. It's a judgment based on AMA and the guys watch it. There was no real race. Um, Jet had a big lead. It wasn't like it came yeah. down to the wire like it did at Seattle where it was uh, Chase and Coop coming down, fighting for the last inch of the track, and then all of a sudden checkered flag. Jet yeah. had a lead. They should have made a priority with the with the Red Cross. That's that's my that's my opinion. I agree. And, I mean, I know they, they probably didn't think about this this much, but – like in that situation, you can see where Vince is. Um, there's 22 of the best guys on a dirt bike out mm -hmm. there in the class. And if they would have just not put any flags, everybody's going to jump the finish line. Yes. And you're not even going to come close to Vince. I mean, you'd have to have something crazy happen to. Yeah, you can I mean, see him right there. Like, he's screen, standing, right? dude. He's standing. standing he's, up. Up. he's standing up. Yeah. I mean, he's and look right. at his bike. It's actually inside of the tough blocks and the yeah. uh, in the tower. His his motorcycle is technically off the track, 
And I bet you where Vince is, is standing is up against the tough block. So I think it was a bad, it was a bad judgment call on, on AMA's part to, to have the flag just stationary. Yeah. Yeah. I hey, remember. Levi, real quick, dude, yeah. do you, are you for radio comms or not for radio comms, bro? You're talking like in a in helmet. Your ear. Yep. Yeah. Like I could tell you like, Hey dude, uh, look out. This guy's crashed like go to the right here or a perfect scenario we're talking red cross flag don't jump the finish line he comes on yeah. you have a you know it's a custom ear pace made goes in i mean nascar every car sport has it um yeah. i'm yeah i would actually be i'm for it like i would want to try it i've yeah i went and rode uh with osborne not long ago and he yeah, trained he likes uh, it he yeah likes oh yeah <laughs> so he's got all of his guys and it was pretty cool like you know, I could hear them talking to them. They're out there doing their laps. Like, Hey, try this line, try this line. And like, exactly, man, it would be, it would be pretty fun. And it would make it just like, I feel like it'd level up the racing too, because yeah, you really? would have somebody. Oh yeah. Because your mechanic's going to see, or somebody up in the stands will then relay your mechanic. Yeah. Hey, so-and-so is doing this rhythm or, Hey, you need to switch to jump into the whoops. Like, yeah, we get pit boards, but it's tough sometimes to uh, always know exactly what they're talking about on the yeah. board. Yeah. Hey, 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 RV. I think it's kind of dangerous. It could be a hazard to have those mechanics out there on the racetrack. So you get radio comms, you get the mechanics way off the track. They'd be a lot safer, right? Where they could just yeah, radio yeah, to their that's, rider. That's Levi, that was a. Too. That's right, right. Levi, that was a fifty point five. Doing good, bud. Psh, yeah. That easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they got to get the monster girl to have one too, so she can get off the track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Awesome. I just, I did. It never happened that quick before. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Do you? Um. So we got uh, you guys had the showdown in Nashville. Then you yeah. have Den. So you guys have Denver and then Salt Lake. So three more, right? Yep. Yeah. Nashville, Denver, Salt Lake. Do you? Uh. Are are, are any of those races, uh, or is there one that you like more than the other? Like, or, or do you like them all? I mean, I'm, like, are you, I'm go good with all of them. I want to, you know, like I would be, uh, obviously that my eyes are set on Nashville. That's the next one, but I really like my focus is really on Nashville. I want to win Nashville really bad. Um, you know, you race both coasts and, and I feel like that would be a pretty big statement, uh, Especially, you know, I don't look too much into Salt Lake. Like, obviously, that would be huge to win, too. But it's one of those things, like, when it comes down to Salt Lake, I'm going to do whatever it is I can do to uh, to to wrap up a championship, you know, if I'm in that position. Um, so, yeah, Nashville is just one of those, like, I want to just go win. And, and uh, I think that would be huge for my confidence, especially going into outdoors and, and – um, Man, I just got to – I know Nashville is going to be super important like any other race, but, yeah, I got to keep getting these starts like I am. I think that would be huge there. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So, Well, RV, you good? You got uh, anything yeah, else I for think the good? I'm good, buddy. And you got, a, you got a couple weekends off. Good job, um, Levi. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for coming on and joining RV here on Title 24. And uh, you've, done, you've done great, dude. It's cool to see, uh, like you and RV talked about, you know, all the, you have incredible bike skill. Uh, it's, it's cool to see that and to, to finally, you know, get over that hump and, and perform to the level that we all know that you were able or are capable of performing at. So, uh, it's been fun to watch your progression, dude, especially, uh, with Mitch. Mitch is an iconic, uh, team owner. Uh, and I, he's an icon of the sport. So, uh, it's cool to see, dude. I'm pumped for you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and yeah. thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. buddy. Yeah. This is pretty no fun. doubt. Do we... Whatever you guys want. So, <laughs> all right. I appreciate the insight too with uh, the red flags and the comms and all yeah. that stuff. And, uh, dude, go enjoy your day off. You deserve it. Catch a big old bass. I'm going to do oh, yeah. that too this afternoon. And uh, I'll send yeah. you some pictures. And uh, okay. again, we appreciate you coming on and uh, we'll see you in Nashville, big dog. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews and highlights 
by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.